Okay, if you've been paying attention, you notice I've mainly been pulling from the same side of the box. Let's go ahead and change it up. It's just those are the way the books were tilted, so those were easier to grab. So here's a golden book from the other side of the box. The Brave Little Tailor. Didn't we have a book about that? We had an excerpt about that. Hmm. And I'm sure this one probably doesn't have any unicorns in it. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room and the continuing saga of the journey to Box of Books. As you already saw from the video, assuming I approved it, today's story is The Brave Little Tailor. I almost heard Brave Little Toaster. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I wonder if that's in there. Looks over at the box. Uh, we'll find that eventually. Pictures by J.P. Miller. Simon and Schuster, New York. No author credit. Also, I like the cover. I like the family of cats looking in the window. Oh, I didn't catch that. But I do enjoy the art so far. It's very delightful. It's, um, hmm. It's not really cut out per se, but it feels very There's layered. no outlines. Yeah, it's very layered, two dimensional. There's no, like, solid depth, even though there's shadows. And there's no outlines. Also, this is on the older side. I think this is book number 178, judging by the numbering. But if that's the number, then the other number to the right should be the cost. And there's no um, cent sign, but it does say 25. I'm guessing it's 25 then. Also, I have done the calculations, and the current price of Goldenberg's is about what it would cost due to inflation. Actually, slightly cheaper. A different. The little golden books are prepared under the supervision of Mary Reed, Ph.D., formerly of Teachers College, Columbia University. That's mm. the first time I recall seeing that in a golden book. I remember at least hearing about her in a golden book somewhere. This brand new version of the old folk tale from the Brothers Grimm is here illustrated by J.P. Miller, who has drawn the pictures for many of your favorite golden books, which is why their name sounds familiar. And why the style looks familiar. There was once a little tailor who loved bread and jelly. He munched it while he worked every day. But one day, some hungry flies swarmed in, and they nibbled at his bread and jelly too. Okay, the way he's eating the bread and jelly makes me worried about products I would buy from him. Considering that the loaf of bread is laying on the fabric along with the bread knife. And the fact that he's eating the bread and jelly over the material. Also, I think this was just done so that we could see there's bread and jelly, but he's holding it up vertically so that the jelly should be sliding off the bread. If you look at the style overall, though, it, it kind of fits with the way the style works. He's not really holding those scissors, I would say. That made the little tailor furious. Scat, he cried, but the hungry flies buzzed saucily back and did not scat an inch. I'll show you, cried the little tailor, angrier still. Swat! He went with a length of cloth. Down fell the flies, four, five, six, seven of them, dead as so many dry leaves. Ho! laughed the tailor. Seven at one blow. The sound of the saying made music in his ears, so he stitched the words upon a belt and clasped it around his waist. Mm. Oh, I like the varying sizes on this, on the left side of the page here. I mean, look at that. We got a skinny person. We got a big person. We got a short person. And we have a row very neatly laid out, laying yep. out the dead. And we have a cat yeah. looking in the window. Going, I was going to catch those. I promise. Also, seeing the seven on the belt spelled out. Yep, he looks very proud of himself. Then, pleased with himself, he closed up his shop. For a treat, he bought himself a nice piece of cheese. But before he could eat it, cheap, he heard a call. Close beside his feet lay a frightened bird. Ooh. Stuffing the cheese into his pocket, the kind-hearted tailor picked up the bird, smoothed its ruffled feathers, and tucked it gently into another pocket. I like this version of the tailor so far. A pocket? 
He's a tailor. I'm sure it's a very well-made pocket. Yeah, but it's still a pocket. I don't know why they want a pocket. Unless it can stick its head out. Like to point out the absent-minded wizards trope. The ones that usually have like a live bird or a frog in their pocket hmm. that they've forgotten about. I really like the art style. It's very, very tale-y is the best way to describe it. It feels like it belongs in a fairy tale. That works. Uh, I think the introductory section for Disney's animated uh, Sleeping Beauty. Hmm. Though it doesn't quite look like that. Then off marched the little tailor, cocky as could be, with his thumbs thrust through his boasting belt. Soon he met a giant at rest beside a tree. Okay, this is really taking a, a variant from the yeah. original story. Good day, comrade, the cheery tailor said. How would you like to have my company? You, roared the giant. What would I want with a little pipsqueak like you? Perhaps, said the tailor. You don't know my worth. And he turned around slowly to let the giant read the seven at one blow stitched on his belt. I like the design of the giant. Very cool. Also, nice hunting knife. Yeah, yeah. that is a very nice hunting knife. And just the way he's sitting, too. It's He's sitting down, he has his hands clasped in front of him, and he's looking down at this tiny little man. Like, hmm. Hmm, said the giant. Of course, thinking it was men the tailor had laid out with his blow. I'll test your strength. Oh, I've seen this one before. Let me see you do this. He picked up a stone and squeezed it in his hand until a drop of water ran out. Is that all? laughed the tailor, pulling out his piece of cheese. He squeezed till the way ran down in a stream. Interesting. Though I do like the giant. Oh, at first I didn't pick up on the fact that he's going, grrr, his teeth are showing. But I really like the design of this giant. There's the proud little tailor over there looking up at the giant hmm said the giant with a darkening frown match this now if you can picking up another stone he threw it so high that the eye could scarcely see it before it plunged back to earth I've also seen this one do you know where this one's going not really no is that all laughed the tailor Mine will not come back at all. He felt in his pocket, brought out the bird, and tossed it up into the air. Away it flew, far out of sight, and the giant grumbled with a thunder roar when he saw that he was bested again. Hmm. Though, this giant looks more like, hmm. Yeah. The, like, like so how did he do that? <laughs> it looks more perplexed. Let's see you lift a weight. The giant said, hoisting to his shoulder the trunk of a fallen oak. Help me carry this tree if you can. Gladly, said the tailor. You take the little trunk. I will carry the big branching top. Away went the giant, staggering under his load. Up into the branches, the tailor hopped and whistled a tune as he rode along. Okay. The Ooh. other ones I can see. see. This one, he's not really helping. He's not even really pretending to help, because he should be on the ground with his hands in the branches, not riding along. Mm -hmm. Unless he's waiting to jump down when the giant stops. Hmm. Assuming the giant never looks over his shoulder. Woo! gasped the giant after a while. That is enough for me. He set down the trunk with a weary thud and turned to see how the little tailor had fared. Ho! Oh, laughed the tailor, swiftly hopping down. It didn't seem heavy at all to me. The giant was furious, but he tried to hide his rage. Come home and spend the night with my partner and me, he said. My partner will be glad to meet a sturdy little fellow like you. Yeah, they keep describing him as being, like, angry, but the giant in the drawing is fairly nice, I would describe. Right now he just looks tired. Well, it says he tried to hide his rage. Hmm. Gladly, said the tailor, so home they went to the giant's gloomy cave. After a huge supper, the two giants showed the brave little tailor to a giant-sized bed and said goodnight to him. But the tailor could not sleep in that huge bed, so he curled up in a corner on the floor. Um, 
giant mattress kind of sounds awesome. Yeah, lots of jumping. I think I know where this is going, especially with the drawing of these two giants, both male, with a rather large knife. That may actually be for the next page, but I'm guessing that someone may try to kill him in the night. And nice way of showing the size of the knife, considering that's an apple spurt on the end of it. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the night, he heard footsteps close by. Opening one eye, the little tailor saw the giant's tiptoe up to the empty bed and pound it all over with great clubs. Then, satisfied that the little tailor was done for at last, they went back to the fireside and soon were sound asleep. <laughs> These ones I'm okay with. The tree was the only one I'm like, I can see the other tricks. That one, look, not so much. The brave little tailor waited till they snored. Then he dropped a dish on the head of one. Oof. Well, he was lying, but they did try to kill him. Stop hitting me, that giant grumbled, pushing at his partner sleepily. I didn't hit you, the partner said. But just then, the little tailor dropped a dish on his head. Hey, you stop hitting me, he cried, ramming an elbow in his partner's chest. Ooh, hair pulling, wow. Soon they were fighting for all they were worth, and they tore each other to bits. Brave little tailor watched from his safe corner, and when nothing was left of those mean old giants, he marched himself proudly out of that cave and back to his hometown. Interesting. Also, I like how they keep referring to them as partners. I know what they're actually going for, but you could actually misinterpret this another way. Especially now. He found the town in a great uproar because of those giants and the wicked things they had done. The king had offered his daughter in marriage to anyone who could free the land of them. Oh ho, cried the tailor, the princess is mine. I killed those old giants last night. No one believed him. Everyone laughed at the cocky little tailor with his boasting belt and the cocky boasting words upon his tongue. Interesting. Who's going to believe him? Oh, no, I'm also talking about the art, too. Mm. How they've laid out everything. I like these gargoyles over here. They're happy and probably laughing at him, especially based on that particular person right there. Yeah, whose expression reminds me a little bit of the gargoyle. Ah! I can see that. Go and see, said the tailor, and he told them the way to the cave. So the king sent his army out to sea. They came back with the news that the tailor spoke the truth. The giants were as dead as posts. And oh, what a battle it must have been, cried the soldiers, peering out of the corners of their eyes at the brave little tailor standing there. <laughs> as he hid in a corner and watched the two kill each other. Hey, it's still good trickery. So the tailor won the hand of the princess that day, and as much bread and jelly as he wished. Sometimes he still wore his boasting belt saying, seven at one blow, but he never hunted giants ever again. Hmm. I seem to remember the Disney version also Mickey tackles a giant. Yes, he does tackle a giant. And he almost gets burned alive because the giant rolls a haystack into a cigarette and Mickey was hiding in the haystack. Oh yeah, I remember that. I was wondering where that particular image came from. <laughs> so what do we think of this lovely little book? It was cute and fun and I'd heard some of those tricks before. Mm -hmm. wonder if they were originally attributed to the Brave Little Tailor, because I read them in other stories. Ah, I guess the only trick I felt bad about was the tree one. At least pretend to carry it. He should have been walking on the ground just touching the branches. That would have been sufficient. He wouldn't have looked exhausted at all. No, because all he would be doing is walking. The only thing there is keeping up with the giant's footsteps. Mm. But still, he could have done a little bit better job there. But no, it was good overall. And other than not really wanting to buy clothing from him because I'm afraid it would have jam and bread on it. Also, I just got a funny idea. Would you consider the tailor in this book a Mary Sue? Interesting. The only thing I think of that is a check off for him not being a Mary Sue is the fact that not everyone likes him. He only gets that liking later. Because that's usually the characteristic of a Mary Sue. Everyone automatically likes them. Yeah, I've, I've had trouble with that. Uh, one time I was playing an, in a forum and we were running an online game and I didn't mean 
to be a Mary Sue. I, I like to point out the other authors were interacting, but like almost every male character was trying to protect my character. It's true. I was there. I watched it happen. I'm actually the one who encouraged her to join the forum because I'm like, I need some help. But then suddenly no one's talking to me anymore. But I would talk to you and then I would write the posts for both our characters. Oh, there's that background again. Yeah, the older one where it has the characters around the edges and a long description of why you should like golden books. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the lady in the front, not invented them, though you probably could say that. Came up with the idea or, you know, is she supervising the process? I really like the giant, the way the giant is drawn. I actually kind of feel kind of bad for him. Even though he was terrorizing the town and I knew what was coming, at the beginning I was like, oh, I like the way he's drawn. Yeah, I do like the way he's drawn, but we didn't find out he was terrorizing the town until the very end. I thought he was just like some giant sitting on the road and the tailor came up to him and started tricking him. And to clarify what Lux is saying, he's talking more about the design of the first giant because by the time we get to the end of the book, we have two giants. Now that the other one isn't well drawn as well, but we only see him in a couple of pages and usually only like from like the waist up at most never got a full body shot all right so this has been the brave little tailor pictures by jp miller i need to read in the fine print simon and schuster new york let me see where that fall falls in because i saw it in here oh they had the copyright so this is before it was western digital hmm. or not Western Digital. That's a hard drive company. Yeah, but I, I want to say it was WD. So let me look at another little golden book because, you know, fortunately we have those hanging around. Western Publishing. I knew I had Western. Ah. Yeah, so Western Publishing apparently came into the game later. Earlier on it was this uh, Simon & Schuster New York. Mm. So that explains some variances here like the way the golden book flyleaf is done compared to the other books because hmm. the other ones are a more um let's say less elegant a little more simplistic a little more kid-friendly it was a fun book thank you sasami chan very enjoyable